Hi, my name is Tiffany and welcome to this week's episode of Tiffany Talks. This is a show that's created so that ordinary people can live extraordinary lives. And I am so excited for today's guest, Kelly Lettman. Um, we met at Sarah Connell's retreat in New Orleans, which is a right to grow rich retreat. And we're both writing books and she's actually already a best-selling author okay champion you mm -hmm. kelly letman and we got into this conversation because a couple of my clients are being challenged with health opportunities and those health opportunities are to overcome cancer now you guys know in my leadership course and mindset makeover makeover academy mindset makeover academy um we teach you how to become the ceo of being you so that you actually can train your body to overcome whatever it is that you want to overcome, but you need help. So when I was talking to Kelly and she said that she specializes in functional medicine, I was like, Kelly, please, please come on the show so that we can have this conversation. She's a best-selling author of the book From Diet to Edit, and she has a brand new book coming out called Thriving Through Cancer, a holistic approach for your journey. And I really love the holistic approach, you guys. You know, I'm all about that. And she uses functional medicine principles to help her clients reclaim their health by finding the root cause, okay? Root, go to the root of their symptoms and disease. Um, she's been really fascinated by the power of food ever since she resolved her son's ADHD by simply changing his diet. You guys, there's so many people out there that have ailments that are diet related and they're looking for prescription drugs and medicines to change something and they're not dealing with the root. So whether your issue is called cancer, IBS, diabetes, Hashimoto's, arthritis, or a host of other names because there's different names, right? But that name doesn't define you. It doesn't define you, you guys. So whatever disease that has been named upon you, right? She helps to meet you where you are. She helps you understand what's happening with your body and guides you into identifying the changes that will support your body's innate ability to heal. Kelly, it's her passion to encourage people in pursuing wellness for life because your health, as you guys know, I always say your health is your wealth. So without mm -hmm. further ado, welcome, Kelly. Come on, tell us more about you. Oh, goodness. Well, you just you just shared it. <laughs> that is me. Um, when when you've worked with your own kids, mm -hmm. when you do a two week protocol based on something you read in a book. And you find out it makes that much difference. I mean, he was night and day different mm. in two weeks of changing our diet, eliminating artificial colors and flavors was the key. Wow. Um, but also taking fruits and vegetables out that have natural salicylates because artificial colors are preserved with salicylates. And so it was more a, a reaction to the salicylates, but um, removing those and suddenly he could sit in a chair and do his schoolwork. Um, he could carry on a conversation and not be fidgeting. It was, and um, you know, you think all we did was change our food. Yeah. Wow. It had that kind of a power. And it was like one of those things, you know, Mary pondered these things in her heart. Yeah. Mama pondered these things in her right. heart. Right. <laughs> and then it was like, well, what else could food do? What else I need to stop food? you right there for a second, though, because my brain is stuck on salicylates. What's yeah. that? <laughs> what is that? Can you describe that a little bit? Salicylates are just a component in nature. Um, and but for some people, it's uh, it's something you react to. Some people react to lactose in dairy. Some people react to gluten in grains. Salicylates are just a component of an aspect of an enzyme in nature. Mm -hmm. And for some, it causes a hyperactivity reaction. It's an allergic reaction to a component in food. And what um, food do you find that in? Well, you know, anything that is artificially colored and flavored, um, but also bananas and oranges and, you know, tomatoes are big ones. So we had to figure out how to do light without ketchup and tomato and spaghetti sauce and things wow. like that. But, 
there are ways, there are things you can do. You can make baked beans without tomatoes. Um, you know, just things like that. And the wonderful thing was this particular book by Dr. Benjamin Feingold, Why Your Child is Hyperactive, is what set me on this path. Um, but he provided, his wife got in the kitchen and figured out recipes for kind of some of the common foods that fit in the pattern without those artificial colors, flavors, and salicylates. Um, yeah. But big things like um, yellow cheese is artificially colored. White cheese is natural. Uh, butter is naturally soft yellow. Margarine is artificially colored. So there were a lot of things, you know, we knew the Skittles and the M&Ms, uh -huh. you know, the Kool-Aid and things like that were going out. But there's an awful lot of our foods that we don't realize mm -hmm. have colors in them, have different additives to them. So there's a lot of reading those labels yeah. that, you know, in that grocery trip. But, but I learned and we made shifts. Um, and now I've learned even more because once I finished homeschooling my boys through school, through high school, uh -huh. then I went back to school for me. Yeah. And that's when I trained as a health coach. And then I trained in functional medicine to be able I to help people. That. I love that so much. You guys, it was really a divine intervention that we met at Sarah Connell's event, which was a <laughs> fabulous event. I must say, like I am a champion of her. Hopefully we'll have her on the show soon. Um, but Talking about functional, the functional medicine approach, mm -hmm. cancer. Now, this is something that is near and dear to me because there are loved ones, people who I intensely love and care about who have this health opportunity. And I do say mm -hmm. health opportunity because it is an opportunity to get healthier, right? So everything gets a reframe. Can you just dive into functional medicine? Like, how is that different from other medicine? Functional medicine looks at symptoms as messages from the body. Mm. Um, in, the, in the conventional medicine approach, they respond to symptoms with medications that shut down those symptoms. But, you know, it's like in your car, when the, the check engine light goes mm. on, you don't just cut the wire so the light yeah. goes off. You check your engine. Yeah. <laughs> and so likewise, instead of just shutting down those symptoms, follow the symptom. It's a roadmap that your body's saying, hey, this isn't quite working like we want. We need some support. And I tell my clients, your disease, which really disease is just a name applied to symptoms. Yeah. Um, but I tell my clients, your disease is not your body's lack of a medication. Yes. Sometimes those medications are beneficial for triage, mm -hmm. but really medications do not, in very rare instances, do they really support healing? Yeah. The, what your body needs to answer those symptoms is either a change in building blocks for nutrients that it's lacking or support in lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. Because often a lot of the diseases we have chronically, the chronic diseases we have these days are food and lifestyle based diseases. Mm. And your body is just saying, this isn't working for me. We need to shift. I need different support. Yes. I love that so much. I love the fact that you're talking about what exists in nature. And one of the things that we that we are, I think you and I are aware of, but I'm not sure everybody else is, is that in nature, even if there is like a poisonous plant or a poisonous tree, within 12 feet of that is the antidote. Yes. So nature is built to sort of a self-sustaining and healing organism. And we are mm -hmm. products of nature. We're products of nature. Right. So when it comes to cancer, cancer is like cells gone wild, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so we have this name on it, which has this connotation like, oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> it's the end of the world. Oh my God. But what it really is, is that we all have free radicals in our body, right? They come in like from all toxins, remember, and then our body is constantly fighting them off as our natural healing mechanism. But sometimes when they are just like super vicious, like... <laughs> You know, yeah. they, they attack our healthy cells. And so what we get to do is 
make sure that our cells are as healthy as possible. I always tell my kids, like um, when they get sick, I'm like, your soldiers are inside your body fighting and they need water and they need healthy food and they need rest mm -hmm. in order to keep fighting. And so that's the same. It is that you want to make sure that your healthy cells are fortified so that your body can do its job. So now my question to you is, because my friends are saying like the doctors, it's interesting, but most doctors are not experienced in functional medicine. No, and, no. And so they are they trained in nutrition. Yeah. And really it's, using it's food insane. and the yeah. value of food. So um, what would you suggest, like for someone who's gotten a diagnosis and they want to know, what do I eat? I mean, I'm telling you, you guys, if you go to the hospital, some of the food that they'll feed you, like if you're sick and you must be recovered, it's unbelievable. I, I, we know they're doing their best. But everything is in a package. They'll give you like desserts, like, you know, this weird jello, like all kinds of things. And very but, little vegetable. <laughs> very, that are not going to support your healing. So you guys get to be in control. If you're, if you have been diagnosed with something, you got to remember that your body is your responsibility. So you get to educate mm -hmm. yourself. So back to you, Kelly. So you're writing this book, which I love it, Thriving Through Cancer. Mm -hmm. I want to hear all about it. I know it's not out yet, but what are some of the top tips that you would like people to know? Well, first of all, what spawned the book a year ago was a friend of mine who was in cancer treatment reached out to me by email and said, I have a binder almost ten, two inches full of, you know, this big, thick binder that's all the details of her protocol. And she said, all it tells me for nutrition is drink Ensure or Carnation Instant Breakfast. And she said, I've known you long enough to know there's so much more and I need you on my team. Yeah. And so I did coach her and she came through her cancer journey wonderfully. Wow. She is totally recovered and living life strong. Um, but I couldn't rest with that nagging in my heart. And I thought if she is just one and there are 1.9 million people each year that are diagnosed with cancer, how many of them are being taught drink ensure, drink carnation and some breakfast. Bleh, you know? yeah. It's not feeding their body. And a lot of it is because me the medical community in general doesn't recognize the value of nutrition. Um, and I've actually talked to some doctors who say, if nutrition was such a big deal, we'd know about it. We'd have the science with it. <laughs> well, they're looking for scientific studies. They're looking for you know, the, the, um, in, uh, I just lost the term, the double blind placebo controlled, you know, yes, uh -huh. scientific studies, which are extremely expensive. And as a result of those studies, it, you know, what's the return on investment for covering the cost of such a study? Wow. Usually with the medical and pharmaceutical companies, they're going to get a big return because they're going to sell the product as a result, but you can't, patent and make money from nature. And so the, the science is not out there because the funding is not available for these extensive scientific studies to prove that food, that natural substances can be as effective as pharmaceuticals. There are small studies, there are smaller ones, but they aren't the big ones that get blasted out there. And the doctors may not be as aware of them. So we have to be the ones to say, wait a minute, y'all have been around for a hundred years or so. Yeah. Nature has been around for centuries, <laughs> millennia, yeah. you know, I, I think nature's got a hand on this. And what we really need to do is, like you said, support the body. So my book is all about supporting, equipping individuals to support the 99% of their body that doesn't have cancer. Yes, I love that. <laughs> because love the medical that. team is totally focused on that tumor and that's their, that's their, you know, that's their profession, that's yes. their specialty, but the rest of the body comes along for the ride. And it's a rough ride if you don't know how to support the rest of the body. Okay, that so I cover it brilliant. from body, mind, and spirit perspective, because it's the whole you that's in this journey. That is so brilliant because I do love that. We don't want to take away from the medical profession and, and, the, and the things that they have done 
to heal people from cancer. Like I said, you know, we don't want to take away from that, but we need to acknowledge that that cancer, those that's just a percentage. Yes. The person. And I think when you lose your entire self and you just forget about caring for your healthy cells, your mind, body, and spirit, you're doing yourself a grave disservice. So what would I say? Because the first thing they asked me is like, well, what should I eat? And, you know, so what are some of the just general recommendations? I know one of the things for sure is no sugar because yeah you know, when they go get tested for sugar, they actually put this fluid in your body. That's a sugar. It's a uh, glucose or something like that. Mm-hmm. So that's where the cancer, they, they can, uh, the cancer cells will go towards the glucose. And that's how they identify you guys listen to this, where the cancer is in the body. So that to me goes, well, if the cancer goes to the sugar, if there's no sugar present, where's the cancer going to go? Right. Right. Yeah, starve it out. that's the, the chapter in my book is the elephant in the room, <laughs> right? <laughs> because it is a sugar issue. And the challenge for many clients, many of my clients or cancer patients is that the medical team wants them to maintain their weight, mm. but not recognizing the value of healthy weight versus not healthy weight. They say, you know, go eat cookies, drink milkshakes, you know, all these things that will cause your weight to increase, but it's not met- metabolically active weight that's going to benefit you. And so I talk about why cancer cells prefer glucose, which is sugar in your system, because they are metabolically damaged and they can only create energy or you know process energy from glucose in an anaerobic process. They cannot the regular cells in your body can choose glucose or fat. Either way, the the keto diet is all about removing the glucose sugar sources and only focus on building the body's ability to consume, to process fat and to sugar into into energy. Mm -hmm. Um, So we want to minimize the added sugars. There are some natural sugars that come from fruits and vegetables. I wouldn't recommend a lot of fruit because fruit has fructose, which is actually fructose has to be processed in your liver before it can be used in the body. And if you've already got a lot of medications and things coming in, your liver is challenged. Mm. So take the pressure off, minimize your fructose, um, but really go for the nutrients in the colors of the rainbow that are found in the produce section. Of your grocery store. Okay, you go down the aisles, you'll see a whole lot of color there too, but it's all in the packaging. Yeah. You open it up, the food's kind of consistently. Yeah. <laughs> so, but so what natural do you recommend? Colors. Like what? Like what? Because I'm thinking colors, I think fruit. For vegetables, like it's all the greens, you have your spinach and your kale and your cucumbers. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then you've got reds in, um, in, well, you've got apples and pomegranate and things, but tomatoes, peppers, um, even rhubarb and other different ones that are more seasonal that we don't see as frequently. But then you've got orange and yellow, purple and blue are very, very strong antioxidants. You talked about the free radicals. We need to counter those free radicals with antioxidants. And free radicals are caused just in normal processes in the body, but especially when the body is battling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so someone in in cancer treatment needs those antioxidants to deal with the, the byproduct of warfare in the body, which is free radicals. What is your, what is your take on, I mean, so like, cause I know some like red potatoes are supposed to not break down in the sugar as much as a regular, uh, russet potato. What are your takes on like, I, um, like yam, sweet potatoes, things like that. I tend to lean more towards eating sweet potatoes, um, or yams in, instead of white potatoes, Mm -hmm. because white potatoes, when they are cooked, turn to sugar faster in the body. They're Mm -hmm. higher glycemic. So if you look at the glycemic load of foods, that's how quickly food turns into sugar in the body. Um, Root vegetables tend to be faster glycemic unless they have a lot of fiber in them. And the the way you cook your food, the fruits and vegetables can vary. You know, if 
I, I have clients that come to me saying, I really don't like vegetables. Mm -hmm. But then when we talk about it more, we find out that their their moms would cook vegetables so they were kind of to mush. Yeah, I remember that. Texture, they didn't have <laughs> flavor and interest. And so when I begin to introduce them to ways to cook the fruits and you know cook the vegetables so that they have flavor and they've got interest and you get the colors which sparkle the you know dazzle the eyes and attract you in then you the colors represent different nutrients so when you're eating the colors of the rainbow you're getting a variety of nutrients for your body and mm -hmm. it's beneficial and white is a color too so <laughs> with white you might have cauliflower or um a white cabbage which is kind of green um you know i consider bananas to be white because mm -hmm. we don't eat the yellow peel we eat yeah. the inside which is white um but onions um uh, you know there's so many different benefits in the nutrients that you find in cruciferous and allium vegetables that that really are helping the body to clear and detox and process things properly okay so my next question because i'm just thinking about this what is your take on protein Protein is vital because your body can't make new tissue, can't restore and rebuild what's been broken down without protein. Um, but what we also need to look at is what is your level of stomach acid? Do, does your body have the ability to really break down the protein once it gets to your stomach? And by the way, did you chew it very much when you were eating that meal? We don't stop to think about how valuable chewing is, mm -hmm. not only mechanically breaking down and helping to start the process of digestion, but mixing with saliva, which is enzymes and begins the process primarily for the carbohydrates we're eating. But um, if you, you know, the typical chomp, chomp, swallow approach <laughs> to eating a bite means that meat is going down into the stomach in big chunks that requires a lot of stomach acid to break it down. And if you don't have sufficient levels of stomach acid, which by the way, is usually the people that have acid reflux, mm. they don't realize, doctors don't recognize that acid reflux is not caused by too much acid. It's generally, and there are 20 years of studies that prove this, it's too little stomach acid that causes the esophageal sphincter at the bottom of the esophagus the doorway into the stomach to be loose and floppy. And it makes it easier for acid to pop up into the esophagus. And it hurts because we don't have the mucosal lining in the esophagus that you have in the stomach. Mm. So often I'm working with my clients to improve their digestion, to make sure they've got the proper levels of stomach acid to break down their foods into its components so that their body can use those components. Because if you're not well digesting your, your protein, you're not getting the B vitamins, the B12, the B9, you're not getting intrinsic value or intrinsic factor, which is released in the stomach to help the B12 be absorbed in the small intestines. There's okay, a lot that goes on there. Up. Another question coming up because... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's definitely the vegan journey and um, yes. I've been on a more uh, plant-based diet. And, you know, there's another school of thought that, you know, every, everything that you need is already in the nature and you don't have to kill in order to get mm -hmm. it. And, and there's also the school of thought that, you know, the animals today, uh, the yeah. ones in the store, the way that they're being killed and the acid and the meat and the and the adrenaline and the meat and the toxins and all of that stuff that's in the meat, even just to preserve it, to color it, you know, all the coloring mm -hmm. in the meat, mm -hmm. you ingest all of that. And if the, and the animal is sick, <laughs> a lot of times the they sick. Up with when I buy it, the meat's yeah. sick. So yep. what, what do you say about that? Mm -hmm. I'm very selective about my sources of meat. <clears throat> um, wild caught fish, selective breeds of fish, the, you want the smaller breeds, the smaller type fish that haven't been in the food cycle so long that they build up their mercury supply. Mm -hmm. um, What's so a smaller fish, like what? Smaller fish, you know, salmon would probably be as big as I would get because a salmon is usually three feet long or so when it's harvested. Um, but, you know, maybe the freshwater fish or, and, you know, I live outside of New Orleans, so we get red snapper, we get, you know, all sorts of different fish that is, is caught in the lakes and, and the Gulf around us. 
But mm -hmm. I go for the fresh water or I go for the wild caught because I know it's had a natural diet. When you buy fish in the store that is farm raised, they're generally fed a junk diet. Mm -hmm. it's, it's byproducts. It's not natural. If you buy farm raised salmon, they've actually put dye in yeah. the food to make the, the flesh look the right color because they're <laughs> not eating what they normally would eat. Likewise, for land animals, I want, um, I, I much prefer buying chickens from local farmers, but I know how they process them. I know they raise them on, you know, rotating them around in the, in the different coops so that they're not eating just feed, they're eating bugs and things that they normally would eat. That's when you can tell a really good egg because it's got an orange yolk versus a pale yellow yolk. Hello. Uh, okay. So that's really interesting. You guys, even thanks for that because yeah. sometimes I've seen some eggs. I'm like, why are they different? <laughs> you know, why are they different colors? So we want to look for like a the, the healthier diet, natural diet goes more toward dark, dark yellow, almost to orange. And you want that mm. because it's got more nutrition in that yolk than the pale yellow one. Um, right. But I also make a purpose of buying grass fed beef. Yeah. So that I know it's been raised, it's been slaughtered humanely, and I'm selective about that source. But uh -huh. there are many who just, you know, philosophically want more of a plant-based diet. Uh -huh. um, and they have to be even more selective about choosing their food to make sure they get the variety. Uh -huh. I, I've known vegan friends, vegetarian friends who really didn't eat a, a healthy diet because they filled up on grains, which can have a lot of issues. Um, you know, the gluten issues, the, the protein, the roundup that is on our wheat. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that three days before harvesting a crop of wheat, they douse the whole field with roundup in order to kill back the grasses and make it easier to get to the grain, but that wow. stays on the grain. So if you're not specifically eating organic grains, you are likely, and it's as much on oats as it is on wheat, you're wow. likely getting um, a lot of glyphosate, which is not beneficial to your dis digestive system in your body. Oh my God. After that, you feel like you can't eat a thing. So <laughs> it can be challenging. <laughs> it can be challenging, you know, and, but the thing is, the reason why I want to do this show is because as we start to demand a higher quality yes. of food, you guys, listen, if you're watching this show, you get to start to speak up about the quality mm -hmm. of your food because like, you know, society responds to demand. I mean, you know, just me leaning to more plant-based, they come up with all these more plant-based options in restaurants and things like that because people are asking for it. And if you're asking for more whole foods, more organic foods, more meat that's like uh, farm, I mean, like nature raised, right. then we'll get it. We'll get right. more stuff available to us. So this is, and you know, and a lot of times you're wondering like, you know, what's causing all this cancer? Right. Mm. 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 <laughs> What's causing all That's that? That's a loaded question. That's a loaded question. Okay. And so, it's not actually one that I address in my book because yeah. I figure we don't need to beat ourselves up about how we got it. Yeah. You're in this situation. Let me join your team. Let's make it better mm -hmm. through the journey. Yes. And so I specifically talk about how do we support your body to nourish the cells, but also to recover and heal. It's, it's a parasympathetic nervous system that heals versus a sympathetic. And the sympathetic is known as fight or flight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so much of our lives are lived in, what do I got to do next? What, how do I, oh, I missed a call. Oh, I mixed a no notification on my phone. Mm -hmm. And we just do not. Yes. And relax. Oh, that message was for ourselves me. into the parasympathetic. <laughs> that message was for me. Thank you so much for that, Kelly, because I realized a lot of times I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I teach, you know, that's why I'm doing a retreat in Costa Rica, which is, mm -hmm. I love it because number one in the retreat, you're going to be in the rainforest. So the level and quality of your oxygen is like mm -hmm. so much greater for healing, putting your feet in the earth. 
right? Because mm-hmm. we are grounding that energy, yes. is grounding, right? The food is all organic farm to table food. Like people don't realize the benefits of those things, but also slowing down, yes, breathing, yes. meditating. I love that distinction that you made of the parasympathetic versus the sympathetic nerve. So the sympathetic nerve is yes. like, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, right? So, so many of us in the parasympathetic is like, come on. And when you're in that fight or flight mode, your body selects operating systems Ah. that are keyed up, you know, your, your heart, your lungs, your muscles, your eyes, they're, they're on deck. Right. Because you're, you might be fine running for your life. Right. Your digestive system and your reproductive system are put on pause. So if you're eating something, you know, you pull, you're rushing to the next appointment, you pull into fast food, you grab something, we could talk about that level of food later, but you grab something, you're not even really concentrating on how you're eating it. You're just kind of inhaling it yeah. and your body will not digest because you're totally focused on the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And in your body's perception, you're running for your life. Wow. And digestion That's is not so going to happen. Powerful what you just mm-hmm. said. I'm going to repeat it to land that point um, so that when you are just eating on the go, running, then you're not giving your body the time to fully and properly relax and digest because your body is putting all that energy, like you said, towards your heart, your lungs, your eyes, you know, your Mm -hmm. muscles to get you to your next point. Like that makes so much sense. And then, you know what? They always talk about the European, uh, how they can eat more and they're not gaining weight. Well, you would just came up for me is the way they eat. Yep. They have long meals. They talk about it. Take their time. They take their time and they, you know, maybe they walk home or they spend family time or even like, you know, they take siestas afterwards. Yeah. Just in the culture, the European culture, they take their time with eating. They're eating with family. You mm-hmm. know, so many of us in the United States, you eat alone in your car on mm-hmm. the go on the run. So all of those things, again, back to my retreat, community eating, taking your time. All right. So you guys, if you haven't checked out the Costa Rica retreat, you get to do that. We're going to Costa Rica and we get to do all of these things. But so Kelly, when is the book coming out? Because we need to get the book. (laughs) June 7th, June June 7th. 7th. So we've got a little less than a month, um, but June 7th is when it will launch. And um, of course, there's going to, I'm going to be covering social media and all sorts of things to let people know, but um, you can, you can access the book through my, my website at kellylutman.com. The, the landing page is not active yet. It will be later this week. Okay. Uh, And, and it's just going to be saying, hang in there. It's coming. (laughs) Okay. All right. I love that. Like you're in committed. But it's coming. Getting it done. You guys, I, I rushed her on this. I'm like, Kelly, I don't care if it's not ready right now. I want to talk about this now because it's relevant now. If you, guys are leading the, if you guys are listening to this message, like take in this information because it's so vital. And if we just go back on the points, take your time while you're eating. If you're eating meat, chew it, wash the sources, eat with lots of colors, get your rest, take care of yourself. And if you are struggling with uh, some free radicals right now, then you can, they can seek out to you for coaching or nutrition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like Mm -hmm. if you guys are going through this right now, you can contact her and work with her. The next question I had, and I'm really like, you see, I am like all hands on deck because like, I care about this issue. Um, What about doing chemo? Well, chemo is frequently a part of treatment. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, in the book, I don't say anything yay or nay. You know, it's it's got to be your individual decision, but there are things you can do to support your body through the process of chemo. That's what I'm asking. So first during- of all, eating well, eating well, um, you know, eating your eating food that is going to nourish your cells will make a huge difference. I this this friend that's that started me on the journey for this book said that when she sat in the chemo infusion center, they would walk around with a lunch cart or a snack cart and offer sandwiches on white bread, granola bars, cookies, 
juice, all sorts of things that are infusing body with sugar. <laughs> Not what you need. <laughs> And so, you know, the, on, there will be a book portal in the book. I will have a QR code and a URL where those that are reading the book can get to a book portal to find other resources, recipes, some ideas for other support that they may choose to incorporate for their journey. Um, even for those that can't read, understand, read and comprehend well, I will have 10 of the chapters by video so right. that they can just watch it instead. Um, but what I would suggest is going into those chemo sessions with your own food provisions, not relying on what they're serving, but yeah. bringing in a really good vegetable-based smoothie, it can have a little bit of fruit in it for sweetening, but mostly vegetables, lots of good um, ideas that I'll be providing on the, on the book portal. Um, maybe having some snacks like nuts, uh, and, and you want, when you're in chemo, you can get mouth sores. And so you want to have softer nuts like cashews or pecans, not your hard Brazil nuts and, and almonds and things like that. Um, but also you want to work on some detox. You don't want that chemo to stay just in your body the whole time. You want to clear out what's excess. And so I provide ideas for a detox bath, which is tremendously relaxing with Epsom salts and baking soda, and you can add essential oils if you want. And I recommend doing that a couple of days before the chemo treatment and a couple of days after the chemo treatment. Um, just, it's a great thing to do just before you go to bed because it totally relaxes. If the, the bath creates like a reverse osmosis where the magnesium goes into your cells and the sulfite, because Epsom salt is magnesium sulfite, the sulfite draws out toxins. Mm. And so it creates this reverse osmosis in your body, but it's very, very relaxing. And so when you're done with the 15 or 20 minute soak, you climb out, you stand up and rinse off because if there's toxins pulled out, you don't want them staying on your skin. Mm. And then towel off, get in your pajamas and climb in bed and just go to bed, go to sleep. I love that. And you sleep is that. vital too. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Even I was just thinking, I haven't had a bath, but even that just for, if, if you don't, you're not struggling, you can put that into your health, oh, definitely. Your self care, your self care regimen, definitely. everything that you don't have to wait for a diagnosis to eat fruits and vegetables, to check, check, Hello. To, <laughs> to have your baths. Like you get, this is for everybody. You guys, it's for everybody. <laughs> Thank you, God, for meeting me up with you, Kelly. I am so grateful. I'm so grateful for your knowledge. I'm so grateful you agreed to come on the show. Oh, I know yes. that there's people that are going to be supported and healed just by this conversation. May everyone out there who is struggling or is uh, has a health opportunity right now, may you be healed. May yes. you be inspired to fuel yourself and to take care of those healthy cells. May the universe meet you where you are and grant you quantum healing. May you be the miracle that is unexplainable. May you mm -hmm. be the one that people are looking to saying, how did she do it? And may you continue to restore this brilliance of Kelly and success and letting her book go out so that everybody can read it and benefit as we have done today by her information. Thank you so much. I'm you so are so welcome. Yes, I'm so grateful. Okay, so you guys, uh, kellyletman.com. You want to spell that for them? I'm hoping to put some subtitles sure. in case. Uh -huh. Sure, it's, it's K-E-L-L-Y-L-U-T-M-A-N.com. And mm -hmm. that will be where the landing page for the book is. It will show you the different ways you can order it. Mm -hmm. um, we're really aiming for Amazon orders on the 7th because I'm aiming for Amazon bestseller that way. Uh, but, you know, you, you'll be able to get it in hardcover or in ebook form either way. Yes. I love it. I love it. And so we'll probably, it'll probably wait, it'll say June 7th. So not yet. Cause mm -hmm. this, this video is going to go live before that, but so will they be on a mailing list of yours or something like that? Or how will well, they what I can do is provide a link for you. I've got a chemo toolbox handout. A yeah. free resource, and I'll provide that link to you that you can put out with the video. And that will, by doing, getting that, that resource, they will also be put on, on my mailing list. So they hear some more, here's some more. Okay. And I, I have a bi-weekly newsletter that is always talking about food and nutrition and how to support your body because Perfect. we have to be the agents. 
Yes. So I will put that link in the description box. You guys, you'll find that link in the description box so you can get, and I love that. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Um, I love that. So that you're going to thank you for your generosity and giving that gift to all of our viewers. And then you guys get that toolbox. We'll get on her mailing list so that you can be um, alerted to when the book goes out. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much um, for this episode of Tiffany Talks being present. If this episode touched you in any way, please share it with a friend. Mm. Please share it with a friend because the way that we, you know, I always say that we are better together. And so through connection, through community, we can find solutions where there are no solutions. We can be the village for our care and the care of our sisters and brothers in the world. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember, we are better together. Mm. Thank Mm. you. Bye.